Hi, and welcome to Go, Building DevOps Tools, Section 5, Designing the CLI. In this section, what we're going to do is we're actually going to implement the feature set for the command line tool that we're building, Pork, our project forking tool for GitHub. So we'll start with the search feature, then we'll move on to implementing the docs feature, which will allow us to read documentation from projects on GitHub. Then we're going to move on to the clone feature, which will allow us to clone repositories locally to our system. And finally, we'll end with implementing the fork feature, which will allow us to fork projects on GitHub to our own profile. Designing the CLI search feature. In this section, we're going to implement the repository search feature. This will require implementing support for query arguments and the API calls using NAP. So at this point, we're going to build on top of the previous library that we wrote, NAP, and we're also going to need to make some adjustments to the NAP library for it to support query arguments. Query arguments are going to be used, especially for the search API, to pass query parameters. So let's get coding. Hi, and in this coding session, what we're going to do is we're going to implement the command line for the GitHub search tool feature. So what we're going to do is we're just going to implement search as a subcommand for our command line tool. And the command line tool that we're writing is using the Cobra framework for building command line tools. Of course, we could do this with the built-in flag library that's in the standard library, and that would be fine, but it doesn't have all of the features that Cobra has. Cobra has some different features like subcommand support, which we're going to be using for this tool. So what we want to be able to do is we want to initialize our command in init. And as you can see, I already have the root command here, var root command. And this is a Cobra command structure. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to execute the root command in main. And then in init, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a command, which is going to be our search command. We're going to include it here. But we haven't created it yet. So let's go and do that. If I go into the search file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new var with search command, which is going to be the Cobra command struct. And we'll have use, which is a field that indicates the name of the subcommand that's going to be used for the command line tool. So the command line tool is pork, and then search is the subcommand under that tool. Then short is going to be a short description of what this subcommand actually does. So we'll say search for GitHub repositories by key. And then finally, we're going to have the run field, which is going to be a function. And that function takes a Cobra command structure, and it also takes an argument slice. And then we're actually going to call another function from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement another function. But first, let's go back to main in the main command line tool. And let's add pork search command by add command. So the reason that we need to indicate the package is because at the top level of our repository, everything is in the pork package. And then here in the pork subdirectory for command line tool, we're in the main package. So we have to indicate the package that we're using. And now that we've included the subcommand under the root command, we should be able to get some information. And we do. So usage indicates command, and the available commands are help and search. But usage doesn't show us what the name of the command line tool is, so let's see if we can get that added. So I think instead of creating an empty structure here, what we'll do is we'll indicate the type. And the type is going to be a Cobra command. Then in the init function, what we'll do is actually initialize it. And then, just like we did with search, we'll add a use field, and we'll call it pork.
So now you can see that usage indicates that pork is the command which has the available list of commands below, help and search. So this is a little more useful now. And we can also use a description of the pork command. So we can call it the project. And then if we look at help, we can see that at the top of our help, it now shows a description of the command line tool for us as well. So now we have pretty much got this laid out correctly. And if we go back to search, then in our function, we're going to call another function. And that function is going to be called search by keyword. And search by keyword is going to take a slice, a string slice of keywords, and then it's going to return a slice which is going to be a list of repositories that match the keywords that were passed in. So in this function, we're going to call the GitHub REST API, and we're going to call the search API with the keywords as part of the query. And then we're going to get back repository information that's going to be returned to the user as a list or slice of strings of all of the repositories that match those keywords. And then the user can decide what to do with that information from there. And what we'll do is in the search command, we'll actually process that information further so that the user can actually see what it is that they're getting back. So here, what we're going to do is temporarily, we will have this return a static slice of strings with one argument. And we'll just call it my repository. And so this is an oversimplified version of what's actually going to happen. And if I have a repository list and I call search by keyword, I'm going to pass in the arguments. So the args string slice here in the run function is actually the list of arguments that are passed in after the search subcommand. So what your user will do is they will type search and then everything that they type after search will be passed as an argument and that will be passed into the search by keyword function that'll then return your repository list. Now that we have the repository list, we're going to get back all of the repositories and then we are going to print out each of those repositories in order. And so now, we should be able to run pork search and look at the help. And what it's going to show is pork search and flags. And it's going to say search for GitHub repositories by keyword, which is the help that we described in our short description. So this is exactly what we expected. So now we can run pork search. One, two, three could be our keywords potentially. But more realistically, we might type in a keyword, something like topic. Ruby, because we want to find all of the repositories that have Ruby code in them. And when we hit enter, we should get back a list of all of the Ruby language repositories that are available on GitHub. And of course, the information on GitHub is going to be paginated. And so what we're going to need to do in the search results that we get back is we'll need to ensure that we either increase the limit large enough so that we get all of the results back in one request, or we can actually use pagination in order to retrieve multiple responses back from GitHub in order to compile a list of all of the repositories. Or we can choose just to return the top 10 results or something like that. So to simplify things, what we're going to do is we're just going to specify an upper bound. And that upper bound is going to be used to decide how many repositories that we're actually going to see. And if we don't see what we want, then we'll expect the user to enter more specific search criteria so that they can narrow down the list of repositories that they get back and that they can narrow in on what it is that they actually want to see. So you can see that this is how we're going to implement our search feature. And one more thing that we'll do is we'll build a simple test And what this test is going to do is it's going to call search by keyword static list of possible keywords. And then we'll return 
a repository list. And since we know that we're always going to get back the same result, at least for now, we can say if repository list item 0 equals my repository, or better yet, if it doesn't equal my repository, then we're going to fail the test. And there it is. 